Hi, it's Todd with Kudis Industries. Today's video is about how to mount a vessel sink like this one here. Uh, the first half of this video will be how I made a custom countertop out of a piece of floor tile and some plywood. And then in the second half of the video, we'll go into actually making the holes for the drain and your faucet and then how to mount the sink to the countertop. So in this case, I had a single sink vanity. Here I'm just measuring the vanity and locating it and then it's going to get screwed into the wall through that piece of wood that's against the back there right above the plumbing valves. And then I go ahead and mark off two inches from either end on the sides because I'm going to put some angle brackets on here so I can mount my plywood to something. Uh, if you have a piece of granite or a piece of stone you would just use caulking uh, silicone and put silicone right on that top edge and then glue your, your piece of stone down. Uh, I'm going to use plywood in this case, so there's my first angle bracket. It's just a, a Simpson strong tie uh, right angle bracket. You'll see I'll put one of these in every corner, and that gives me something to screw the plywood into. And then the piece of tile that I'm going to use for a countertop will go on top of that. So again, this is a little bit unique because I'm using a piece of plywood and uh, for my backing, and then the tile will go on top of this. So there's all four brackets in place. And then what I'm going to do next is actually measure for my plywood. So I have a piece of plywood rough cut. Uh, so I've just taken the overall width. And then the depth is about 22 and a half inches for a typical countertop. So I'm just checking the squareness of that opening. And then I'll come out 22 inches there and then uh, cut my plywood. So there's my plywood. I pre-made this. It's a piece of half inch plywood and three quarter inch plywood glued together and stapled. So I got an inch and a quarter thickness. And I wanted something substantial uh, to mount my sink to so it doesn't bow or flex over time. So um, here I am. I'm just going to mount that to those angle brackets that I previously installed. Now that my top is secured, I'm going to make a template of this opening. And you'll see countertop guys do this all the time with cardboard and a glue gun. So I have a glue gun there. These are very thin strips of wood and what you do is you lay the strips on the perimeter of that opening where the countertops are going to go and you glue all the pieces together right in the corner so putting a dab of glue and push the wood into it and press it up against the wall and so when I take this off that rectangle or square that I've just made out of these pieces will be an exact replica of that opening. So when I lay this on top of my tile, I can cut the piece to fit in that opening exactly. There it is. So with the magic of video, I've laid my template on my piece of tile and I cut the tile uh, to the template and it looks at it. it fits in there perfectly and it's snug up against all the three walls because it matches my template real nice. So just check the fit. What I'm going to do now is get my adhesive. So this is tight bond, heavy duty construction adhesive. That's a big tube. That's a 28 ounce tube. You could use a smaller one, but I just put a healthy amount of that adhesive all over the plywood. And these beads of caulking are about a half inch to three quarter inch thick. So I'm putting a lot down. And you'll notice I don't put anything right in the center because that's where my drain is going to go because I don't want caulking right on my, my drain hole. So. I got the adhesive down, I'm going to lay my tile into place, and I'm going to work it back and forth. So I'm going to spread that adhesive around pretty good, and then I'm going to start pressing out any air bubbles. So I'll start from the center, work towards the corners, and then make sure that that tile is nice and adhered, and I get most of the air out of that. You'll notice I just put the bull nose edge tile on the perimeter for my backsplash. So the blue masking tape represents the location of my sink. So I put the sink on top of the counter, I moved around left to right, forward to back, and put exactly where I wanted it. Then I put the tape on the counter to mark out the exact location. You also see the drain hole in the middle, I just traced that using the sink as a template, and that dash line around the circle is three inches the whole size of the drain. And you'll see my shop back there for dust. So we're gonna drill this uh, with a dry bit. Here's the Biwi Turbo Core dry bits that I use. These fit onto an angle grinder, so they have a 5 ace 11 thread on them. They're a good price, they hold up well, and they do an excellent job of cutting. So I bought several of these, and uh, I stand by them every time. 
So when you use this angle grinder in this dry bit, you want to have safety glasses, ear protection, you probably have a dust mask. I use a shop vac, but it still gets pretty dusty. So uh, when you use these bits, you actually start the edge of the bit at like a 45 degree angle on the line, and you start it in until that first edge catches, and you gently roll it up to more vertical, and then you roll the bit around as you're cutting. You don't want to cut straight down. That's not how these bits are designed to work. They're actually meant to roll the angle grind around for the hole. And you'll notice I just went through the tile. I didn't go through the plywood. Uh, I, I actually enlarged the plywood hole later on. So I made the, uh, the mark for the faucet here. I just centered it in the opening. Uh, then I'm going to use this inch and three quarter bit. Inch and three quarter is pretty standard for faucet holes. So I just center the bit on the mark, make my mark around it, and then change this out on the angle grinder. And in similar fashion, I will start that bit about a 45 degree angle and then roll it up to vertical and then roll it around in the circle until I get that uh, hole drilled. And again, you'll notice that the uh, I just went through the tile in this case. I tried using a wood hole saw for that plywood, but the side of the um, hole saw kept getting hung up on a towel. So I ended up using the tile bits all the way through the plywood. Um, so it took some time, but it did get through the wood. So now I got both holes drilled all the way through the three inch for the drain, the inch and three quarter for the faucet. Now I'm wiping everything off, just get all the dust off. And I, that, that rag's a little bit damp. Uh, this is a good opportunity to get all dust off because you don't want to put down adhesive for the sink onto dust. That has to be really, really clean. Um, and then this is also a good time to uh, caulk your backsplash because once that sinks in place, it's really hard to caulk behind the sink in that corner. So. I always mask it off. Uh, it might be a little overkill, but I mask my joints. And you'll see that when this is done, uh, I mask on top of the countertop and I mask on the backsplash. So I just, the only part that's exposed is where the caulking is going to go. And what this does is it allows you to put that caulk on there pretty fast and smooth it out. And then once you peel the tape off, you got a perfect caulk joint. You don't have big globs in the corners or kind of a mess. So I do this. Whenever I caulk anything, um, like a sink or a bathtub or a shower, it just it makes for really nice, neat lines. Uh, there are tools out there to help with caulking in the corners. I mean, I have several of them, but I just found out that masking off the joints uh, works best for me. So this is a clear silicone caulk. This is just kitchen and bath um, caulking. Uh, so I just put it on there. I'll smooth it out my finger. That little glob in the corner, that's not a big deal going to come off because of the tape. Uh, so here it's all smoothed out. Then I'll just um, start peeling the tape away. And once that's done, I got a perfectly caulked joint all the way around. So again, it's, it's good to do this now before the sink's in place because once that sink's in there, it just makes it 10 times harder, especially behind the faucet. It's really tight. So again, I'm going to peel all the tape off for the caulking. I'm going to leave my tape on there for my sink location because that is the perimeter of my sink. So that's telling me exactly where that sink's going to go. Now we're ready to install the sink. So I have a kneeling pad on top of the counter and then I flip the sink, the vessel sink upside down. And you'll notice on there I also masked off around the perimeter of the base of the sink. Again, this is for when I spread that adhesive around, it doesn't make a mess and it just cleans up really nicely. So this is Loctite Power Grab Ultimate. It's clear. You'll notice I already put the drain in the sink. You'll definitely want to do that ahead of time. That'll just save you time down the road. So install your drain, flip it over upside down, put a nice healthy bead of this clear uh, Power Grab Ultimate or any really clear caulking you want um, on the bottom of the sink. And you'll see there's lips on the bottom when I'm applying this to. So I went all the way around the sink then once I'm satisfied with that, I'll go ahead and lift it up and then move my pad out of the way. And then this is really when those lines on the counter come into play. Okay, so there's my tape. You'll see the caulk on the bottom of the, uh, the silicone on the bottom of the sink. Move that out of the way. Now, here's where it all comes together. So here we got tape on the sink, tape on the counter, and I just line it up. It's out. Easy it is. I don't have to guess where it's going to go. So I put it on there, line it up my front to back, side to side, and then I'll press down. 
Press down, give it a little wiggle, front to back, side to side. Make sure that caulking scooches out, and there we go. So this is why I put this tape on here. So when you ever press down that sink, that silicone is going to ooze out because it's it's squeezing between the counter and the bottom of the sink. So once it squeezes out, then that gives you a perfect seal to your counter. And then you could once the masking tape's there, you just peel off the masking tape, and you got a perfectly um, sealed and caulked sink. So I always tell my customers, I would wait 24 hours before I use this sink. It allows the silicone on the drain to properly cure, as well as the silicone between the sink and the counter to cure as well. You could probably get away with less time than that, but I've always found 24 hours is very, very safe to make this leak free. Here's what it looks like with the faucet installed, and then there's another shot here with the medicine cabinet light bar in the sink to give you an overview of this project. Hopefully this video helps you get a better idea of how to mount a vessel sink to a countertop. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.